Welcome back to BCU Freshman Class Series, where we'll be teaching you the most important building blocks of ham radio and DMR. This freshman series is for those just getting into the hobby for the first time who might not know where to begin. In these videos, we cover broad topics in terms you can understand so that you can start your ham radio journey on a stable foundation. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more instructional content just like this. We really appreciate it. For today's video, we're going to go over a variety of basic ham radio terminology so you can decode the language and learn to talk like a real ham. In any hobby, you'll find there's almost another language or dialect you have to learn to really understand what everyone's talking about. There are few hobbies more densely packed with this kind of inside language than ham radio. So my goal here is to ease you into things without scaring you away. It may seem daunting at first, but stick with it. The fun has only just begun. To kick off this beginner's dictionary, we're going to start with amplitude modulation, or AM. Amplitude modulation is a method of combining an information signal and RF, or radio frequency carrier. Shortwave broadcast stations use this type of AM, as do stations in the standard broadcast band, 535 to 1710 kilohertz. Few amateurs use double sideband voice AM, but a variation known as single sideband is very popular. APRS. APRS stands for Automatic Packet Reporting System. It's a situational awareness system used for data location services in both casual and professional environments, from road trips to emergency communications. ARRL. The ARRL, also known as the American Radio Relay League, is a US-based organization of amateur radio operators, and it also publishes the monthly QST magazine that a few of you may be subscribed to. Call sign. A call sign is a series of unique letters and numbers assigned to a person who has earned their amateur radio license. If desired, a ham radio operator can apply for a vanity call sign, which is a custom call sign chosen by the radio operator with certain restrictions. Color code. A system in which numerical values are assigned to various colors. Colored stripes are painted on the body of resistors and sometimes other components to show their value. In the world of DMR, color code represents a number which is used in place of a PL tone or a CTCSS tone. CQ. CQ stands for calling any station. It's a general call made when requesting a conversation with anyone. Like other telegraph terms which originated on the landlines, CQ was brought over into radio and used as a general call to all ships by the Marconi Company. Other companies used KA until the London Convention of 1912, which adopted CQ as the international general call or attention signal. But why the letter CQ? From the French sécurité, which translates to safety, in this context, however, it means pay attention. CW. CW is a radio communications method of on-off keying of a radio frequency, also known as international Morse code. Duplexer. A duplexer is a filter that filters out two very close together receive and transmit frequencies and allows you to use one antenna. This is typically used with a repeater system. Frequency modulation, or FM. These are the types of signals used to communicate by voice over most repeaters. FM is a method of combining an RF carrier with an information signal such as voice. The voice information, or data, changes the RF carrier frequency in the modulation process. As you might expect, we use voice or data to vary the frequency of the transmitted signal. FM broadcast stations and most professional communication teams, like police, firefighters, taxi drivers, etc., use FM. VHF and UHF FM voice is the most popular amateur mode. Mobile devices. A radio transmitting device designed to be mounted in a vehicle a push-to-talk PTT switch activates the transmitter. We have a course on BridgeCom University website dedicated exclusively to mobile radios, so if you want to learn more about what they're used for and why, we encourage you to check out the link in the description and start studying today. Phonetic Alphabet The phonetic alphabet is composed of standard words used on voice modes to make it easier to understand letters of the alphabet, such as those in call signs. For example, my call sign, W3AMG, stated phonetically would be Whiskey 3 Alpha Mike Golf. QSO. A QSO is simply a conversation between two amateurs. A highly active ham radio operator will have many QSOs on a given day. Repeater. 
A repeater is an amateur station that receives and retransmits signals over a wider area, thus repeating the signal. They are often found on tall towers and buildings used to boost a range of handheld and mobile units. Repeaters receive on one frequency and transmit on another, either in the same band or two different bands, a method known as crossband. Most modern radios are automatically programmed to execute the repeater shifts or offsets in certain parts of the ham radio band. Transceiver. A transceiver is both a radio transmitter and a receiver combined into one unit. A fantastic example is the Zygu G90 transceiver, which we have a dedicated course for on Bridgecom University. Again, the link to Bridgecom University is in the description for you to check out. We can't stress enough how important it is to have a trustworthy resource out there, so if you find yourself struggling, you know where to go. UHF. UHF stands for Ultra High Frequency. It's the band of frequencies between 300 megahertz and 3 gigahertz. This includes the amateur 70 centimeter band, 440 megahertz. VHF. VHF stands for Very High Frequency. This is the band of frequencies between 30 megahertz and 300 megahertz. This includes the popular amateur 6 meter or 50 megahertz and 2 meter bands, 144 megahertz. Now you should have a basic understanding of the most common ham radio terminology used today. This list does not begin to cover all of the various technical jargon you'll hear out there on your ham radio journey, but it should provide you with a foundation to start learning the more complicated aspect of this awesome hobby. Is there a comment you think should have been on this list? Leave us a comment down below and let us know. Thanks again for watching. I'm Cody, W3AMG73.